Thanks for inviting me today. Um, I'm Kaho Abe, and uh, so I'm actually now the for former Computational Fashion Fellow. <laughs> so my fellowship ended, uh, but the program there actually continues at IB. So uh, if you're interested in fashion and technology, I would look into that and uh, look at their website and see when the next um, sort of lecture that they have is coming up. Um, <clears throat> I'm also the artist in residence at the NYU Game Innovation Lab. Um, and so my work is basically, when, when I talk about my work, I, I explain it as games, um, and games that are digital games but are played in the physical world um, so that people can uh, play them face to face. So that instead of being sort of having an isolated experience, staring at a screen and using a traditional game controller, I often make my own controllers, um, so custom controllers um, and uh, with digital games. Um, and I have a background in fashion design. Uh, I was a fashion designer for 14 years, um, and uh, I have experience in a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of corporate sort of uh, fashion design companies. Uh, and so basically, um, in order to kind of bring everything together uh, to describe better what I do, um, this is an image that I show in my after school program that I'm teaching at IBEAM uh, this spring also. But um, this is kind of what the after school program is about, but also really what my life is about. Um, and I grew up um, like obsessed with you know uh, drawing fashion um, all the time, uh, and then but at the same time. Um, I was also uh, very into you know, learning how to code, and um, I learned how to code on a Commodore 64, <laughs> so that can kind of date me a little bit. Um, and I also played tons of games. Um, I don't know if it's, I often think it's a cultural thing, but, um, uh, but maybe uh, there's just some families that just play games a lot together. Um, and so all these things, um, were really important to me, and uh, and it's only been really recently that I've been able to bring all of them together. Um, and so I went. Oh, so for for undergrad, I went to uh, I studied economics, but then afterwards I wanted to pursue my uh, my childhood dream of becoming a fashion designer, and that's when I moved to New York and um, and, and started working and taking classes and things like that. Um, and then. More recently, in 2005, um, or 2003 to five, I decided to go to graduate school because I wanted to learn how to embed technology into clothing. And uh, my thesis in graduate school was called Discrete Interfaces. <clears throat> and basically, this is kind of, I, I thought this was really funny, and that's why I put it in here, but this is actually from my thesis <laughs> presentation. And I think it's funny because there's like a PDA there. <laughs> um, but, uh, but anyways, in, in my mind, in graduate school, I was thinking, oh, you know, clothing can be like an interface as, as we use keyboards and mouse uh, and mice. Uh, clothing can be the same sort of thing that, that gives us access to our technology. Um, and then, uh, so discrete interfaces is basically this, and it doesn't really look like anything, and that's the whole point. Um, and wh what, I, what I know about fashion is that um, our clothing really carries these sort of uh, social messages um, that that we give to uh, society around us. Like we want to be uh, taken seriously. We'll wear a business suit to a business meeting. Um, if you know, I want to look casual. If I want to be sort of play the role of a casual person, I'll dress more casually. Um, but but that's the idea. I think uh, that that when we choose what we wear that day, that's, that's what's actually going through our minds. Um, and so, so when, when we embed technology into these sort of wearable systems, um, if you're going to a business meeting and you're wearing a suit, you really don't want like a fast forward button to be sitting on your sleeve. Um, and because it might you know, disrupt that, that social message that, that, your, that, that your clothing is carrying. Um, so I, I experimented with a bunch of different interfaces. So this, 
was this demonstration tool that I made called the sleeve station. Um, and each sleeve is a different style, but it all connects to the same MP3 player. And, um, and I use things like capacitive switches on snaps. I use little um, sort of squeezy switches in these little tabs there. Um, I had some spikes and kind of like a, a punky sort of sleeve. And they're all controllers for the technology inside. Um, so that's what I was playing with uh, in, in graduate school. And then at the same time, I started studying uh, game design. And I really love that. Um, and so I combined wearables. This is my first attempt to combine games with wearables. Um, and I created this game called Hippie. Um, and it is basically uh, uses a hacked uh, wireless doorbell system. Um, and you wear these hats um, with a box on top. And each box has a wireless video camera, an arcade button. And the arcade button is what's connected to the wireless doorbell try to hit your opponent on their button. <laughs> and when you do, your camera takes a snapshot. And if you can see your opponent in that snapshot, you get bonus points. Um, but so, uh, and, I, and I wired it all together with um, a, a wireless doorbell system. If you can imagine the kind with the, the back door and the front door, um, and, and the same receiver, that's what I used. Um, and. <coughs> My in inspiration was, uh, was uh, Twister, and Twister sort of creates this magic space, I guess magic circle, um, that, that allows people to sort of get into these awkward physical positions with each other. And I wanted to create a digital game that pretty much did the same thing. Um, and Hit Me is a really intense game, and you end up like bumping into the other person, and um, and getting pretty physical. So um, so that was one of the main inspirations for that game. Um, I looked at other games, like or sports, like fencing <coughs> and sumo, really like intense one player versus one player sports. Um, and I analyzed the rules and things. I was also inspired by um, this film and sort of the really raw kind of um, scenes that happen, fighting scenes that happen. Um, and that I wanted to bring that some kind of raw feeling to the game as well. Um, and you can see the disease <laughs> from the mind. Um, and then I also had these uh, injury waiver forms. Um, and then I had a, a tournament with a trophy as well. And so it's not just about the game itself, and it's not just about Know, the wearable hat, but it's also about this whole experience that comes with it and getting people to sort of sign away <laughs> the fact that they might get injured um, and that it, this you're, you're going to enter this sort of dangerous world, dangerous experience. That was the, the purpose of that. Um, and then there's a screen which is for the spectators. So you have the players and then you also have the spectators will eventually be, possibly become the next players of the game. Um, and so I always think about that sort of relationship with not just the players playing the game, but also people watching it. Um, oh, um, so I'm going to quickly show a little bit of this movie. I think that um, near the end there's some playing. There's no sound, so I'm just going to talk on top of it. <laughs> but it's pretty, it's kind of intense um, physically. But it was really interesting because when people play this game, I mean, it's a short 30 second game, um, but you can see a lot of different people and kind of flashes of you know, these different relationships that people have with each other. Um, I played myself once. Next is Mary Mike 5000, uh, which I worked on in 2010. 
um, but I um, I realize that there's all these games like Guitar Hero um, where you know people want to be like rock stars. I went to this party at at a conference, a game conference, and um, it was a Guitar Hero party, and the player would stand on the stage, and the place was packed, and he would stand get on the stage and go. Hello, San Francisco. And I thought it was so weird because it's just Guitar Hero. But they were really excited. And they were like starting to play this role as this like as this uh, rock star. And I thought that was so interesting. Um, and then I realized uh, that all these rhythm games are really they're not new. Uh, rhythm games are not new. And in fact, I played this, which is patty cake, right? Patty cake type games um, as a child. And it's essentially the same exact game. You're talking about timing and accuracy of clapping. And that's exactly what you're talking about when, you're, when you play these digital rhythm games. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to basically create, recreate the patty cake game, but reintroduce it in such a way that other people would feel comfortable playing it. Because I, don't, I just remember little girls playing it, but nobody else. Um, so I made these controllers. Um, essentially, I made this uh, this vest here with like raw denim. I wanted to make it kind of like a rocker vest. Um, and these sort of silverish uh, pads there, they're conductive. And I also had some gloves uh, with conductive pads on them. And I made this circuit, which looks really messy. <laughs> and you can see how messy my process can be. But what I, what I created was, um, was a system where each glove has a different voltage ID, and it actually goes uh, really, each glove switches between sending a voltage ID and reading a voltage um, ID, um, and it switches between them really fast. And so you have four gloves, right, two people, and so one glove is reading at a time, and that glove, the reading glove, rotates around and around really fast. So what happens is that it happens so fast that when you make a clap, um, it, it almost makes a simultaneous sort of read. But, um, and then it knows whether or not you have that combo. And then if you have that combo, then it's, it, it decides, the technology decides if you have hit that combo at that right moment. Um, and depending on that, it will give you a score. So that's how basically the game works. Um, and then that's kind of the interface, the screen interface. And I showed it at IBM and a, a few other places. It was kind of fun to see people who, I don't know if they ever played patty cake, but they were essentially <laughs> playing patty cake. Um, and I have another video for this, but unfortunately the, this one, the, uh, the volume doesn't work, but um, maybe if I play it a little bit, so we, we got the, we made um, my collaborator, Lana Benekito, her husband is um, a musician, and he basically re-recorded with um, his music partner the same exact songs that I sang as a child, but in like this rocker form. And then I guess there's more images of people playing. <laughs> this is really cute. <laughs> father and daughter. This is father and daughter too, I think. <laughs> Finally, um, this is the most recent project I've been working on, um, and this is Costumes as Game Controllers, uh, the Lightning Bug game, and I was thinking about different things like cosplay, and um, I went to this installation uh, by Chris Bilk where uh, they, use, they use the Kinect camera and you can become a bird, uh, and you go like this, and there was this grown man who was completely hogging the installation <laughs> because he wanted to be a, a bird. Like doing, he was like, you know, jumping around and doing poses like this, 
and, um, and I was like, wow, he's becoming a bird. Um, and so things like that, um, the, the idea of this like really immersive experience is, is very interesting to me. So instead of, again, looking at the screen, really bringing the, the experience out here into the physical world. Um, and I think that costumes can really um, add to that. So when we play video games, we often play them through um, avatars. And so I started thinking about how if we dress like the avatar, you know, what would the game experience be like? And then if we embedded technology into the costumes then, and we played the game through the costumes, then what, how would that change our game experience? Um, and so thinking about those questions, um, I took like the theme of the lightning bug. Um, it's, a, it's a very like nostalgic kind of Japanese um, children's sort of, there's a song about lightning bug. <coughs> and I wanted to use that. Um, and I started thinking about sort of the scenario and the story of the game. Um, I'm, I wanted it to be uh, an experience that happened between two players. Um, and so two players would go through this experience together. And um, to intensify the experience, I wanted them to be sort of cooperative players um, fighting some kind of virtual enemy. And I quickly thought about this, again, in another movie scene. I often think about movie scenes when I think about um, physical games because they help really um, uh, help you imagine sort of how people and stories and spaces work together. Um, so in this specific um, example, there, this is a samurai movie where the, the samurai is surrounded by uh, enemies. And so, and that kind of like last stand kind of feel, I wanted to sort of bring that into the game. Um, and so, in order to do that, um, I did a couple of things actually. So one is I created this dome, um, which is, uh, I guess it's a little faded here, but it's a 10 foot high dome and a 20 foot wide dome. And it's probably the biggest thing biggest object I've made in my life, um, and it took a while to sew, um, but it's a projection dome, and the, the players are supposed to stand inside it and, and play the game, and, and that's where the, the virtual enemy sort of appears. Um, and I also wanted to have some kind of interaction between the two players, um, and so one player is actually, they have very different roles, um, and, and this really emphasizes their sort of need to rely on each other. And one player is the collector of the power, and the other one is, is the shooter of the power. And in order to transfer the power from one person to the other, they have to hold hands. And so that was sort of like my brainstorm sketch from that. Um, and So here are the actual controllers. Sorry, I had to skip around a bit. But um, so this is the tank, the person wearing the tank, where um, each kind of layer is 3D printed layers, is lit up as they accumulate power. And then the shooter um, has a gauntlet, uh, and there's a laser embedded into it. And the 3D printed spikes have uh, LEDs underneath it. And so it has to accumulate um, it has to charge essentially for the laser to shoot and then they have to hold hands so there there's gloves with these conductive pads on them um, and in order for the power to transfer um, and so some other things that I did with the, the immersion I really wanted to think about sort of like what costumes and, pa and power could sort of bring um, and I started thinking about these heroes these superheroes and, and the whole the whole idea about like transformation um, and this is actually one of my favorite things to, to show here. Um, this is uh, Kamen Rider, is a Japanese TV show. And um, these, these are, this is like a compilation of, of um, past Kamen Riders. I think it goes all the way to the 70s. Um, oh, this is the one with the wearable helmet. And there, there's these amazing gestures and amazing sort of things that they shout. <laughs> and this whole idea of transformation.
transformation. So trans transforming people from their regular selves to becoming this character in this in this game, I think, is, is also something I wanted to really think about. Um, so uh, luckily, the the technology that I use, um, I embedded an Android phone and a yo-yo board in each one of these controllers. So the uh, uh, Android phone has the Android phone that I use has an accelerometer on it, so it can uh, potentially sort of do some gesture recognition there. Um, and And then, oh, this is the Android phone and the yo-yo board. And essentially, the Android phone and the yo-yo board in each controller was all, they were all networked to a computer running sort of the main game, uh, game program, and which was connected to the projection and the computer vision on the dome. Um, and so this is the game that 